hi everyone welcome back to my youtube channel thank you guys so much for joining me so if you're new here my name is holly i make food and fitness content today's video is a little bit different it is covering pcos and endometriosis the first thing i will say before we get into this video is i do have a previous video which covers the beginning stage of my journey with PCOS and endometriosis, which includes kind of realizing I had it, getting diagnosed, the process I had to go through to get it diagnosed and my first initial surgery for it. So if you haven't seen that video, it does give this video a lot of context. So I'll link that in the description box below so you guys can go and watch that. At that point when I finished that video, I was in a really good place with my PCOS. I had had the surgery for the endometriosis. We thought hopefully we'd got rid of all of it. I started managing my diet a lot better and I just felt like I really had it under control. However, towards the end of last summer, as you will see in this video, I started to experience a massive flare up in my symptoms. My hormones were all over the place. I felt so tired, I felt so drained and the physical pain that I still now experience every single day just got really overwhelming and I just felt so deflated. You'll see this all through the video because I did document it. And basically this video just shows me following a little bit of a different path that I personally haven't seen anyone follow online in order to try and help those symptoms and manage those symptoms. And I felt like at the time, as much as I didn't want to pick up the camera, me being vulnerable and sharing my experience with it would hopefully in turn make one of you, if you were experiencing the same thing or if you feel like you do have PCOS or endometriosis, feel less alone because I cannot explain how deflating it feels at times, especially as a 25 year old female, the thought of having to go and have a second surgery on my ovaries at this age just made me feel so rubbish. I'm not gonna talk too much because I do cover the whole journey in this video, but like I said, if you are experiencing anything that I'm experiencing, hopefully not only do you feel less alone in this video, potentially this could be a route that you could also look down. Hope you guys enjoy the video. I will be rejoining you at the end to kind of discuss where I'm at now with the path that I took, if that makes sense. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video. So it is currently Monday. Oh, I feel like I'm gonna cry already. Monday, 10th of October. And and I have spoken about this a few times on my channel, like over the past few months, leading up to this point in October, but like my PCOS is so bad. And I feel so frustrated today because I don't know, it's just, it just sucks. Like I don't really know, how, anybody who has PCOS or endometriosis will know like it just sucks and like I just have pain every single day and like today it's just so bad and it makes me like not want to go to the gym and not want to do work and literally just get into bed and like curl up in a ball but it's not that's not how real life works I can't just sit in my bed because my stomach hurts oh, it's just really frustrating so I kind of like had a bit of a thought yesterday and I think I'm gonna have to get back in contact with the specialist so a bit of background i previously had endometriosis i had surgery for it about i'd say two three years ago I, i'll figure out the exact dates um and when they did the surgery he basically said that they've got rid of all the cells so hopefully the endometriosis shouldn't come back but there's a potential that you have like microscopic cells that they can't see that can form and come back and i just feel like at this point like it, it must be back like i just can't i can't think of any other reason that it's just my PCOS now, like I just have this really bad feeling that it is endometriosis again, which would mean having to have a second surgery on my ovaries at the age of 24 years old, which I don't want to do. Like it was just so, like the surgery was fine, it's not that, it's just, I don't know, it just sucks, like I shouldn't, nobody should have to like have that, it's just annoying. So basically today I'm trying to get the step to get back in contact with the specialist that did my first surgery and I basically just thought I'm gonna try and document this process um, because I feel like initially before I did it, I didn't have social media when I had to have my surgery and it's something that so many girls have to go through. So hopefully if I can kind of document this process, it can help other people. It just makes you feel really deflated and it's it, I just feel stu like stupid for being upset about it, but it just sucks. And I'm going to say that a million times, it just sucks. So the previous surgeon who carried out my surgery is Dr. Andrew Pickersgill. He's a specialist in Manchester. My mum actually found him by just researching specialists in the area. And he was the one that I went to that first actually like, ever listened to me. So I'm not, I'm going to try and 
basically cut through what I had to do last time of going to GPs and the wrong doctors and I'm just going to go directly to him. So currently I do have his secretary's email, however it's a £250 consultation fee which is a lot of money. So I'm going to try and see if I can get a referral through my GP. So I'm going to try and get in contact with my GP today which will probably be very difficult because they're just impossible to get hold of and hopefully get them to refer me through to him for a consultation which will mean that I don't have to pay the £250 fee. Oh, just sucks. Symptoms wise, just to kind of like fill you guys in, um, pain is so bad today. It's predominantly on my right hand side, but like the pain gets so bad that like the top of my legs like feel numb, which is just really horrible. It's just like not a nice feeling. Um, stomach cramps are really bad. Headaches, um, just like fatigue. I just feel so tired all the time, which sucks because i love going to the gym and i love exercising i'm literally about to go to the gym now i can think of anything worse but i hopefully it will help yeah this is a little like i guess diary entry of the update number one i literally just did like a long run that's why i look the way i look and like physically the like pain in my ovaries is like so bad it's so annoying because that last time i spoke to you guys like i felt like this and I was crying and I literally ended that thing and I, I don't know why, it just, I just felt so deflated and I haven't done anything about it, which is why I'm still sat here crying. I just thought like, well, what is the point? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna call them and have to go for another surgery on my ovaries and then I'm not gonna be able to run. I'm not gonna be able to go to the gym. I'm not gonna be able to do things I enjoy. And like, what, how do you win in that situation? <laughs> like, and I know it sounds silly and I saw some friends last night and they were like, your physical health comes first before things like running, but like, running in the gym is like my mental health and if i go and he's like oh you you like need to have surgery and you can't do your marathon next year or you can't do your half marathon this year like it if it interrupts with those or it goes over christmas like i don't know like it's just so silly there's just never a good time to have a surgery obviously and this is me just assuming that i i need surgery i don't like that might not even be the case but then if i don't am i just supposed to like have this forever because like on that run like it's so frustrating like running's like the thing that i love and like i literally was like at, I think it was like mile nine like started to like cry because I was like in pain and I was like this isn't normal I'm gonna I'm gonna do something about it that's why I just picked up the camera because I'm annoyed at myself this is like the like fourth time I've got in this state over the past few weeks of like physical pain in my body it's just so frustrating and it makes me feel so like disheartened that like this is like my body and I don't know why I'm getting so upset over it it's like it's like I'm a woman I should be able to have ovaries that are like fine <laughs> And they're just causing me so many issues. And I'm crying like a baby. This is literally going to be the most blubby vlog ever. I guess like when I went through the process before, I didn't have social media and I couldn't kind of share it. I could only really reflect on it. I, I guess like, I don't know, like it's not that beneficial to people to, to be like, oh, like I'm fine now. Because it's kind of like, well, what was it like at the time? And I guess I would have liked to have seen someone else's experience to make me feel like less alone in the situation, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. So that's what I'm trying to be as vulnerable as possible and kind of share everything with you guys. What we need to do is we need to think of the next steps, the positive things that are gonna help. Oh, so I need to stop crying. But I think moving forward, God, I'm so sweaty from my run, sorry guys. I think moving forward, I'm gonna try and do two things. One is I'm gonna try and contact the specialist that did my surgery today, see if I can get a consultation with him. I'm also gonna sit and write down every single symptom I've had rec recently because I've been having a lot of like bleeding which is really abnormal for me um and th like the physical pain like this is just like you can't like I feel like you don't feel like you can do things like day to day when you feel like this the hormones obviously big side effect at the moment um also there's another clinic in Manchester that I might contact for blood works but I think what I'll do is I'll speak to his secretary first see if he can maybe do my blood work I will take you guys along for the journey with me. I'm gonna pull myself together first and have a shower and I'll speak to you guys when I'm a bit more not like this, I guess. So, <laughs> last time we spoke, obviously a little bit emotional. Um, it is currently now Monday the 31st. So I think the last time I spoke to you guys was on Friday after my run when like I was just dealing with a lot of pain and just general like frustration. And I think, I'm trying to think, I think I was talking about like the two kind of options that I have and one was to go and speak to the specialist. I think I've kind of had to sit down and think about it over the weekend and that's obviously what I did initially and it it is a good route to go down. However, I kind of feel like because I've already done that, I feel like potentially I should just try something new because I had the surgery for the endometriosis. However, we're now 
two years or three years past that point and I'm obviously just having issues again so I'm thinking nothing changes if nothing changes I guess that's kind of like my thought process now so I feel like I briefly mentioned this but basically there is a clinic in Manchester called the OMC um, and it's basically like the online menopause center and my mum actually found it and recommended it to me. It is partially for women who have menopause um, and they basically try to help by balancing your hormones However, they do help with girls with endometriosis and PCOS in order to try and like balance their hormones to reduce symptoms and reduce pain and things like that. So I'm thinking that is probably the route that I'm wanting to go down at the moment because I'm just so fed up. <laughs> I just need to do something and I feel like this is something different. It's something new to try. I hope this will work because there's obviously something like hormonally going on with like bleeding. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm just calling because I'm just wondering. Thanks, bye. So that's good. Hopefully have an appointment next Monday the 7th. Um, like I said, it's currently Monday the 31st. So basically what they do is they'll have an online consultation with me, kind of talk through problems with that. They'll potentially see whether I need blood works done, which I think is probably what I do need doing. Um, and they'll schedule all of those privately. And then if I have any hormone deficiencies or anything like outlining, they can prescribe hormone treatments to try and help treat those directly. If not, they can kind of offer similar advice. So hopefully, this is a step in a positive direction and they can see if I am lacking in something and that maybe is why I'm having really bad flare-ups at the moment and then we can just go from there, hopefully, fingers crossed. Good morning guys, sorry I'm looking a little bit puffy today, I'm literally rushing around but I'm about to jump on to my call um, that I said that I was going to have basically with the clinic that kind of look mainly at like hormones so I literally need to jump on this right now, I'm all over the place this morning, I'm not going to lie guys. Hi, morning. Hi, good morning, Holly. And from that point, that was obviously two mm -hmm. years ago, I've almost had like about kind of like a year and a half of feeling like fine. However, over the past like six months, I've just had what I'd considered like quite bad flare ups in my PCOS. I'm mm -hmm. slightly concerned the endometriosis has come back just because mm -hmm. of pain. However, surgery isn't a route that I want to like go down again just yet. Like I'd rather try to kind of look at the hormone side of things and see whether there's anything we could do from that side of it. So my initial periods were quite regular, but they were just mm -hmm. extremely painful to the point where like I couldn't get out of bed um, <laughs> some days and like just couldn't even go outside. And then I went on the pill when I was about 14 for acne. I think it was Diana. Yeah, and I was, I was on that for, I think like four or five years. Yeah, and then I just kind of realized that like I didn't really have periods but I always thought it was because of like the pill kind of like messing up mm. my cycle um and last six months now what's happening with your periods so, so I basically started getting like quite bad like cramping like in my back lower back um mm -hmm. and my stomach and I kind of have mm. like this constant like dull aching again um mm. but like the cramping will get so bad at times that like the tops mm. of my legs almost go numb I was getting mm -hmm. like shooting pains I get like shooting mm. pains like almost like through my like crotch area and like ovaries mm -hmm. and then like hormonally I just feel a bit all over the place mm -hmm. um, psychologically yeah like just very like up and down kind of can't maintain and anxiety or irritable what is it yeah so it's like I get a really bad like anxiety at the moment and I'm not somebody that would say that I'm an anxious person like mm -hmm. um periods of just just like being really overwhelmed I guess um mm. but then I'll equally have like moments of being like on top of the world okay so camera is definitely about to die but that was actually very helpful I feel pretty good off that so that was the call with I'm going to tell you the name of the the online menopause center so that I feel like this vlog is definitely like a bit of a jumble um but this is basically kind of the route that I'm going to look to go down first through them i want to try and do things naturally like i said i don't want to have another surgery on my ovaries at the age of 24 so i'm gonna try and work with these guys that doctor was so lovely and so helpful and just like kind which is always nice to meet someone when you feel like a bit vulnerable speaking about things so through them i'm gonna basically organize some blood testing we're gonna also do an internal pelvic scan next step is just to look at hormones look at what my blood work is saying and then build a treatment plan from there but she has actually recommended that up to that point i start taking vitamin d omega-3 and primrose oil daily those are supposed to be really good for hormone balancing so that was something useful that i can kind of take away from it 
and do now up to the date of my blood works, which I should hopefully be getting done in the next week. They're gonna call me and try and arrange because they have like local centers that they work with to do them. So hopefully that'll be done next week because next week's when I kind of see my hormones all over the place basically. Okay, so I'm just about to head off to my pelvic ultrasound. Fun, love that for me. I have had to drink a whole bottle of water because you have to have a full bladder. But I also had a Diet Coke before. Mm. And Diet Cokes really make me need a wee. And I've got half an hour until my ultrasounds, until I can wee. So I'm probably gonna wee myself by the time I get there. But hopefully this will basically identify endometriosis if there's enough for them to pick up on an internal ultrasound. Any cysts, if they've grown on my ovaries um, and just any kind of like other abnormalities. This is just kind of the first stage in like ruling things out or just identifying things. So I will keep you guys updated. I'm assuming they will give me the feedback and the results when I'm there. If not, we'll just probably have to wait a few days, but I have also got my blood tests in the morning that I need to go to. So I had my ultrasound yesterday. I had an external and an internal ultrasound. Um, I know that probably sounds horrendous, but it's really, really not that bad. Um, so also number one, I was so close to wetting myself. Obviously I had to drink all that water before I went and, and you have to have a full bladder and even the woman was like, whoa, like you have gone to town. I was like, I am literally about to wet myself. Like as soon as she was done with the external, I like ran to the toilet and it was touch and go at that point. But yeah, so I had the external and then the internal. So the internal, in case anybody is having to go get them, they're really not bad. It's basically, they like probe you. They like put like a condom on and probe. It's just like a long stick basically and they just, whack it up there have a little look around really not painful just like feels a bit strange that some woman is like sticking a probe up your vagina basically but it is the best way to see everything in terms of like looking at your actual ovaries and it was so strange because the clinic i went to was obviously mainly specializing in doing like pregnancy ultrasound so they had like the big screen in front of me so i was like looking at my ovaries and i was like this is so weird like i can see my little ovary right now in terms of her initial kind of like thoughts, she said there's no cyst that she can see, there's no endometriosis that they can see, which is obviously really, really good. That was the case when I had endometriosis a few years ago. You have to have large batches of it in order to see it on an ultrasound. So it doesn't rule it out completely, but the fact that there's not a lot of it is obviously a really good thing. There's no cysts. Everything looks fairly healthy from what she can see. So that's obviously really positive. So I am now heading off to my blood test, which to be honest is the main kind of thing that I really wanted done. I feel like this is gonna give me more of an indication of kind of like what's going on in terms of like my testosterone levels, my progesterone, progesterone levels, I think that's what they're called, estrogen levels, things like that. I feel like this will give me more of an insight into hopefully why I've been feeling the way I've been feeling and just kind of like what's going on with like my periods at the moment but I guess we shall see I really don't like getting my blood taken I feel like it feels really like weird but it's a mind over matter sort of situation this morning and we will be absolutely fine probably regroup and chat to you guys when I have the results and hopefully some positive news so the last clip that you guys would have seen was me heading off to get my blood test. We are a little bit further along now. It is currently the 12th of January. So post having my blood test, it took around a week for those to come back. The clinic emailed me straight away saying, we've got your blood works, please can you book in for your follow-up appointment? The original doctor I'd seen was actually away. She did let me know that that might be the case. So I thought I'll hold off till January. So I held off and actually a week ago, I got a phone call from the clinic, basically advising me that they felt from my results, they actually wanted me to have a consultation with Dr. Leila Kabuski, I believe her name is. She actually owns the clinic and they felt like it would be a better match for me to sit down and check through my results with her. So I had that phone call three days ago. I cannot tell you how much that phone call has helped me feel like I understand my body and my symptoms so much better. Like it's just so lovely to speak to somebody who completely understands and hears what you're saying, but also explains it to you in a way that makes sense. So essentially the results from the blood test, testosterone levels were fine. Typically women with PCOS do have a higher level of testosterone. And I did previously find that with a blood test that I did a few years back. However, that's not the case at the moment, which is obviously really positive. The main finding coming out of that was that my progesterone levels are very, very low. And honestly, when she said that and explained it, it makes so much sense 
hormones. So as females, we have two female sex hormones. We've got progesterone and we've got estrogen. My estrogen levels are good. My progesterone levels, however, are very low. Having low prog prog progesterone, <laughs> I'm gonna get that wrong so many times. Having low progesterone levels can basically cause a number of issues in the female body. And when she was explaining these, I was like, this is literally every single symptom I have. So irregular bleeding, an irregular cycle, headaches, fatigue. It can also be a result of anxiety and mood changes, which was obviously something that I noted that I had been experiencing. She does also believe that from my experiences with pain and the constant pain that I am experiencing every single day, that my endometriosis might be back. Obviously, when I had my internal ultrasound, they didn't know that they could actually see any endometriosis. However, she said that that doesn't necessarily mean it's not there. And just judging by the pain that I'm experiencing and having previously had endometriosis, it is likely that it has come back. And having very low levels of progesterone and having endometriosis, it basically means that the endometriosis can grow a bit quicker and it makes it a lot more painful because progesterone is actually a natural anti-inflammatory and it also slows the growth of endometriosis. So obviously what we've analyzed is that I need progesterone in my body. So the clinic gave me one or two options. They can make up a specialist hormone concoction, basically. So I'm obviously lacking progesterone. They can make that up. So they can make them into these lozenges that you just like pop in your gum and they dissolve for like 30 to 40 minutes, but you can't eat within that 30 to 40 minutes. And I eat a lot. So I basically was like, that's probably not the best option for me. So I have actually opted for a cream. So basically I've got a cream on order. I've not got it yet. And every day I just do one pump onto my wrist and I just rub them together and just leave the area. Don't put any perfume on it, don't put any other creams on it. And that will soak into my skin and basically give me the progesterone that I'm missing. That should be arriving, I believe it's next Monday. But I just already feel so much better. So obviously, like I've just mentioned, I don't currently have the cream. I haven't currently started the treatment plan. However, I really wanted to get this beginning half of the video out because I felt like my experience with the clinic so far has been so positive. And if you see me at the beginning half of the video and how deflated I felt and how upset I felt compared to now where I found potentially what is gonna be an amazing solution and really help a lot of my problems, I just wanted to share that. So if anybody else did wanna go down this route, they can. I do want to know, I completely understand that this is not accessible for everyone. This has had a price tag attached to it. I'm gonna go through every single price of everything I've paid, just so you guys know for full transparency that this is is a bit of a pricier route. So I have just priced everything up. Again, like I said, this was a bit more of an expensive route to go down. However, having previously been to GPs, been to a specialist, been to a surgeon, I just wanted a different route that could provide me hopefully with some answers, which I feel like it definitely has. So the initial consultation with the online menopause center was 225 pounds. From that, I then obviously went on to have blood works and an ultrasound. My blood works cost me 230 pounds. Blood works just are expensive in general anyway. The ultrasound cost me 145 pounds. I then had a follow-up consultation with the online menopause center, obviously with Layla. That was 165 pounds. And then I went on to order the cream. So the cream itself was 109 pounds. Altogether, it was a fairly costly process and like i said i'm not just saying like everyone should go and do this because i know that that isn't accessible for everyone but personally i feel like if you do have the money available to do it i do definitely feel like it has been worth it obviously like i said i've not yet seen the results of the process i will be doing a vlog following all that along and sharing that with you guys in like two three months i just want to be in the best place to actually really share the results with you however i do actually know firsthand people that have gone to the clinic and used them more for their menopause services but i've just had the most positive experience with balancing out their hormones so i have no doubt in this and in the fact that i will see positive results and i'm just really really excited so yeah, that is where we are currently up to and this is the end of the video But like I said, hopefully it has been useful I will leave the link to the online menopause center in the description box in case anybody does want to use the services But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next week